Hello and welcome to whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, well, no. I'm an audio programmer and a technical sound designer that's going to be doing some work on uh, some of this cool Unreal Engine stuff that's coming out with uh, the Soundscape plugin in particular today. So the thing we're going to be building is um, this. Now I know it doesn't look like much right now. Uh, we're just gonna be using the first part of the Soundscape plugin to set up and deliver a version of Soundscape that just plays a sound when you enter each zone and setting up some different zones so that we can add on top of this with the Soundscape palette. Now this Soundscape palette is, uh, or the Soundscape plugin itself is actually in demo at the moment or it's in beta. Um, so it's something that'll keep being worked on, but it's by um, Dan, who's a fantastic sound designer that you should follow and check out and look at all of this cool stuff that appears in different places um, with regards to Unreal Engine. Now, the thing we're gonna be doing today is uh, I've just, every now and then you poke around the marketplace and you find a cool asset and Unreal or uh, Epic has some great assets for free, uh, the free for the month this month um, happens to have this beautiful stylized winter city environment. Uh, so check out Jesse Storm's assets and environments. I think uh, I think this one's really beautiful. So I just made a an empty project uh, with the first person template and added the winter soundscapes to, or not winter soundscapes, added the winter demo scene to the project. From here, we're going to go up to edit and click plugins. We're gonna look for the soundscape plugin um, and we're gonna enable it. When we enable it, we do have to restart. So real quick, we're going to throw a restart. And once that's restarted, I'm just going to navigate to uh, stylized winter city preview scene, the demo scene. And this is the scene we're going to be working in. Now this, uh, this version of it, we um, are slowly going to kind of build this beautiful wintry environment. Um, it's got a bunch of really cool places. Now, just to be sure, we can do this right at the start. We can click and run around. We have uh, some some control here, uh, just because I'm using the first person template. So now that we've made that, uh, we haven't really made anything yet. Uh, let's make a new folder um, called Soundscape. And inside that folder, I'm going to uh, navigate to audio. And you'll see this if you've done if you've done the import properly, you'll see the soundscape um, sort of session here. We can have colors and palettes. Now, the way these works, palettes, you know, are, are, are collections of colors that you might use to paint something. Um, simple enough uh, version that you can probably find more information of here, here, and here. Um, we'll probably link to more of that as well. So the soundscape palette itself i'm going to make one called main street this is going to be the main ambience for the thoroughfare here um this this sort of core element and for for the main street i do need a a, a color um let's say maybe lamps um the lamps and lights or let's say maybe snow snow and wind is maybe maybe a little bit more interesting um so we'll say snow i'll just say snow for now it's not gonna sound like snow and that's okay so inside uh, this soundscape color, I'm just going to open that up and drop in a really basic sound. It's gonna be fire because it's called snow. So, uh, you know, whatever. Yes to convention. Yes to creativity, no to convention. Whatever the saying is. I don't think there is one. Anyway, um, we're going to, we're not actually gonna add any more of those elements. We're just gonna open up the palette and click the plus next to the colors, drop down the index and drop in our new snow. This is like, putting it on the palette, putting the color on the palette. From here, we have this playback conditions. And when I hit edit here, you're gonna see I have a root expression. And this is like the rule set that applies to this. And I'm for now, I'm actually gonna click all tags match. Um, this is to say that the tag that's selected at the moment has to be equivalent for this to trigger. Um, we're gonna explore that in a second. When I click edit, I find that I don't actually have any gameplay tags, like, oh my God. So we need to add some. Uh, we're going to add a new gameplay tag. It's going to be called Main Street. And we're going to say a tag for denoting the main thoroughfare of the city street. It's kind of obvious, but it's a good idea just to, to sort of play with it, I suppose. Uh, for now, that's the only tag we actually care about. So I'm going to save and close. Um, and we have 
something. Uh, I also want to make, I want to make another tag here just so that I can prepare something, but I don't want to make it here because if I make it here, I'm going to add it to the soundscape color. So instead I'm going to go edit project settings and navigate to gameplay tags. And you'll see, I have a main street here. It's the same kind of window, same serialized field. And we're going to say back street. Uh, the snowy rear of the buildings in the small town. I don't know, something, something, you know, that I could, I could sort of describe um, what they are. So from here, uh, we're going to uh, make sure that Main Street has that uh, Main Street tag. So the Main Street palette should have the Main Street playing condition and the tag, and the snow should be loaded in um, with an audio asset. So far, we have everything except anything happening in the scene. So for something to happen in the scene, I will need a Blueprints folder. And inside the Blueprint folder, I'm gonna make a Blueprint class, which is gonna be an actor. Uh, we're gonna call this like Soundscape Trigger Volume. Um, and this will allow us to just add a volume, uh, not sorry, not a volume, a box collision. Right, uh, so that we can sort of resize this box, pull it around where we would like. And we're just going to check that it definitely has, uh, that it can be stepped up on and it is overlapping all, because uh, it would be awkward if it wasn't. So just in case you're unfamiliar with Blueprint scripting, the, edit, uh, the event graph here is your friend. Uh, we're going to grab the, uh, the actor overlap and we're just going to print hello, so that when we walk into... Um, this soundscape trigger volume, we have, you know, the words hello printed. You might be, you might want to scale this up, but instead of scaling it, you should actually look to uh, change the box extent size. So try and pick a spot that you can sort of align visually. You can sort of kind of see. So for instance, here, I'm just going to go for that. Everything before the alleyway. Now, wherever my camera is, is where my character is going to spawn. So hopefully when I walk up, hello, we're good. <laughs> it speaks to us. Fantastic news. Uh, we can pack it up and go home, I guess. From here, we're going to need to edit the blueprint a little bit and create uh, quite a bit more logic because the blueprint is a little bit more complicated than, uh, than nothing. First thing we need is the actual soundscape subsystem. This is the, the, the core logic that runs behind the whole thing. And we're gonna do this thing called adding a palette collection and this is when we begin overlap so there's two sort of sides of this that we need we'll need event begin overlap and then end overlap so one for when we're entering the zone one for when we're eg exiting the zone now this palette collection uh that that should kind of work except i need um something to configure so i'm going to promote this up to a variable so i can um so we can use that and i'm just gonna click the little i so that we can see it uh in the blueprint view. So if I scroll up here, um, we should see in a second, maybe I need to compile it. There we go. There it is. There's our palette collection. So we can open this up and drop in our main street. Um, that's for this specific instance. Great. Now that we've done that specific instance and we've got the palette collection here, I'm actually going to populate this to a variable as well, um, because I'm gonna use this palette collection name to turn on and off the systems a little bit, because as you can imagine, we wanna add it, you probably also want to remove it, right? So when we, when we think about cleaning ourselves up, we can just use the same name to turn it on, we'll add the palette, so putting it on the palette, or I guess putting the palette or next to the next to the canvas, next to the easel, um, and then taking it away again so that we we can and can't paint. This doesn't in fact make any sound yet. Uh, so the next part of this example will be to take the soundscape subsystem and set the state uh, to the palette collection that we're after. But we can't do that now. Why can't we do that? Well. We're looking for a soundscape state, not a palette collection. They are two different elements here. So instead I need as well to promote this to a variable so that we'll be able to select, you know, this region is main map. This region is back of grandma's house. This region is Santa's hopes and dreams uh, room. 
Jesus. Uh, um, all right, and the other version, we want a clear state. Uh, this is, again, just kind of keeping the theme of like create, destroy, create, destroy, um, where we're going to basically, it, it's very similar to like pop, pushing and popping uh, something in, in, in the, the mixer as well. Um, for here, just to keep our visual side, do we need our visual side? You might want a visual side, so I'm gonna make a Boolean called uh, debug uh, triggers, right? And with this debug triggers, if we have debug going, um, we'll, we'll print something as well, just so that people can, uh, yeah, just so that people can, you know, you can see if you really want, uh, what, what, what's happening, especially if you get a couple of overlapping, um, overlapping sort of nodes and things like that can be a little bit harder to tell. For here, we're going to format string, format text, sorry, format, format text, text format. We're, we're trying, we're trying, we're really trying. Format text, there we go. Got to turn off context sensitivity. Uh, and we're going to have entered state, right? And same kind of thing, but if anyone wants to guess it, they can shout at their computer. I'll actually hear you. It's pretty fantastic technology. And we're going to use this palette collection name uh, that we stored, that we prepared earlier. And we're gonna pass that into both of those elements. So if we have the debug on, we will turn this on and off. Now, the only other part of this is actually setting uh, that name to begin with so that we load it up uh, correctly. And we can do that by grabbing our soundscape state and set a palette collection name, right? And this is get tag. We get the tag name, we set it in. So at the start, they all have a little reference. Now, uh, the only thing that needs to happen here is we need to check our soundscape state. So this is saying um, load up the main street and within the main street, we want to say trigger this when the main street fires. So this one here is saying what the tag is that you're using to control the thing. And then the main street is what palette do you want me to load up? We want to turn on debug triggers um, as well. And presumably if we walk into the space, we hear fire. Now that's definitely not snow, but we've pretty much done uh, what we were looking for. If we leave, it fades back out again. Now, uh, if we wanted to add a second, uh, a second component here, so we're going to say smelly um seller because i've been playing way too much diablo um and then we're going to say backstreet all right inside backstreet uh we're going to have the smelly seller and we're going to say hey instead of main street let's do the backstreet so these are going to be kind of exclusionary um we're going to work on building some better uh some better ambience matches and things next literally um maybe in the next tutorial or the next version of this uh, we're going to call this main street for the main street and then back street. Um, all right, and this back street, we're just gonna put that literally, uh, just highlight the whole range. So again, just going back to my box, changing my box to be way wider, sort of moving it over a smidge, just so I can take that whole, yep, and there we go. So. As we get into around the back, we're gonna go into the box and the main street's gonna be a different space. Now, again, I'm not gonna do too much fiddling with this because it's it, we haven't got any good sounds yet. We just need to change main street to main street and back street to back street. And if we've done everything the way that we have in that lightning journey, you can see just how quick this iteration process is once you get this up and running. Move into the main street and move into the back street, right? Now, I don't think we set anything good for the back straight. Right, so the back straight, the smelly cellar, uh, probably doesn't want to play the same one. Right. Okay. Okay, so we've entered the back straight, but we didn't have any sound. I have to assume 
What have we done? We've done something. Done something. Back straight. It's back straight. There it is. So here's exactly common problem. The soundscape palette playback conditions is we entered the state, but we weren't uh, passing the correct tag. So it was just saying, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm there, but uh, not triggering it. So is it back up here again? Now we should be able to run through. We should hear the fire at the start and enter this alley. And we get a slightly different fire. Um, you can see that these are uh, really, really powerful. You can chain these together. You can add ones on top of each other and you can combine these together and you have the beginnings of an ambient system. Now, there are actually many, many other behaviors and one shot spawnings and things like that. But I wanted to get up and running um, in, in, you know, 15 minutes or so uh, for uh, playing with this audio plugin, playing with this soundscape plugin. Um, thanks so much for checking this out. Uh, follow me at Weaver Audio on Twitter. Check out www.weaver.com, weaveraudio.com. Don't go to weaver.com. I don't know who this, that is. If that's your, uh, if that's your post, I'm not sure what's up. Um, check out Dan Reynolds' work, uh, the author of this amazing uh, plugin, and uh, I'll post up a couple of links as well. Um, so that you can, yeah, see this thing in action um, in the Electric Dreams demo, in the Matrix demo, you see this kind of thing, but it also has all these kind of other uh, layers and, and some stuff. So I wanted to do a, a really baked down version of this just to get you started using Soundscape. So next time we're probably going to transform this into tons of one shots that all have different angles and, and get some of that beautiful wide stereo stuff that they have going on in that demo. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.